let's talk about matrices or a criteria matrix and how that can help you evaluate or form a judgment on something that is being compared and contrasted. So to evaluate something, you are um, in the act of making a judgment about something, and that is usually part of writing if you are making an assessment or evaluating something or making a recommendation. So it's fairly common in technical writing to have to do this, and the goal is to be as objective as possible. So not subjective, but objective, and that is where you're not letting... Uh, personal feelings and opinions and considerations affect your judgment and in representing the facts of the situation. So one way that you can try to show that you are as objective as possible is of course to use reason and logic, uh, but another way is to show uh, that you have thought very deeply about the criteria involved in the evaluation and you can actually assign numbers to try to make it as objective as possible. And of course there's still some subjectivity in assigning ratings and numbers, but uh, you're trying to make it as objective as possible for the reader. So when you are assessing someone, evaluating something, making a recommendation on what to purchase for your workplace, for example, you need to identify the criteria that you are going to use to evaluate that situation. So there are two main types of criteria. You have the need to have criteria that are required, necessary. If the situation or product doesn't meet that criteria, then they are not going to be considered. And then you have the nice to have or the wants that are not essential criteria but are beneficial to the situation. And so you need to figure out for each situation, what is a need to have criteria, what are the nice to have criteria, and go from there. And after you've decided those uh, criteria, you can then move on to creating a matrix that looks at a couple different things. You could do a yes, no matrix to see if the option has that criteria or meets that criteria or not, or you could do a basic scored matrix where you're assigning numbers and ratings or a weighted matrix. So we have some examples here and the situation is okay so you're working for a company and you need to buy printers for each department for example and so individual printers don't cost that much typically you know it'd be a pretty easy decision but if you're buying 10 plus printers and you need to consider the costs and long-term costs, short-term costs, functionality, that would be a reason to write out an evaluation or a recommendation for a certain type of printer that you want to purchase for your company to be used in multiple departments. So a yes-no criteria matrix is one of the easiest because you're just saying they do meet this criteria or they do not. And you can see this is a table very simple table, it's not even colored in. Uh, and you have the criteria, so these are the uh, criteria that we're looking at for each printer. And then you have the printers, number one, number two, number three, which if I knew what they were, I would probably identify them by name. You know, like HP printer, uh, Kodak printer, etc. <clears throat> so, the criteria I have listed in no particular order because they're all equally important in this scenario. So the criteria we're looking at, prints in color, minimum of 20 pages per minute being printed, maximum cost is $2,500, uh, $2, maximum cost of maintenance annually $200, max cost of replacement for toner is 50 bucks. And so we're just going through each printer and saying yes or no it does or does not meet this criteria. So prints in color, printer number one does not print in color, so we would put an X. It does print at least 20 pages per minute, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Printer two, yes, it prints in color, yes, more than 20 pages per minute, no, it's more expensive than $2,500, 
yes, the maintenance plan is below $200 annually, and no, each toner replacement is more than $50. Looking at printer number three, you can see that we have a check mark for each of the criteria, so yes, it is meeting each of those. And at the end, what you would do is you'd go back and you say how many tick marks or check marks you have in each column, and then you can assign a numerical value. So printer number one is four, printer number two is three, printer number three is five. So if each of the criteria, if it only matters that it meets the criteria and they're all equally important or equally unimportant, then you would just look at printer number three has the highest rating, highest number of criteria meeting the uh, requirements, so five out of five, and you would say, okay, that is the one that we're going to go with. If you want to become a little more specific and a little bit more detailed in your evaluation, you could do a basic scored criteria matrix. So that's uh, this example down here. We're using the same situation that you're buying printers. And with the scored matrix, you would remove any, um, anything that all of them have as a yes, no, because, you know, what type of number would you assign it, right? So the prints in color that's a yes, no, we would have to remove that criteria because, you know, how would you rate it if they all have printing in color as an option? Um, if one does not, though, you know, for example, we had printer number one that did not print in color, you could leave it in and say one for does not print in color, five for yes, they do print in color. But just for simplicity, I have removed the printing in color, focusing on pages per minute, cost of printer, cost of maintenance plan, and cost of replacement toner. And you can see note at the bottom here. The scoring is 1 through 5, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. And I would go through for each printer and rate it, score it, as how well it is meeting that um, expectation. So pages per minute, um, if printer number 1 has a 5 and printer number 2 has a 4, that would mean that printer number 1 prints more pages per minute. So for example, printer number 1 prints 30 pages per minute, Printer number two prints 20 pages per minute. Printer number three prints 30 pages per minute. Uh, the next example, cost of the printer. Again, the cheaper it is, the higher the rating we would give it, the more expensive it is, the lower the rating, and so on. And again, with a basic scored criteria matrix, everything is equally as important. So everything is worth one to five on that scale of rating, and you just add them all up. So printer number one gets 15, printer number two gets 17, printer number three gets 16. So if you used this basic scoring criteria matrix, printer number two would win because it has the highest score of 17 compared to the others, although being one number off is really close. Uh, so sometimes if your evaluation is that close, you will then need to explain that yes, printer number two is the best option and we're going with it even though it's very close to the evaluation of printer number three. And then the last example here is of a weighted criteria matrix. This is what you would use if certain criteria are more important than others. And so what you would do is you would then weight that criteria as being worth more. And so what you can see here is we have the same setup, pages per minute, cost of printer, etc. Except for now we have an extra column that says this is how much it's weighted. So pages per minute is the least important, it's worth one. Cost of the printer, second most important, uh, tied with maintenance plan, so those are both worth two. And the cost of replacement toner is the most important, so it is going to be worth three. And what you do is you take the score that you would give it and you times it by the weight. So for printer number one, if you gave it a score of five for pages per minute, so it's got a lot of pages per minute, um, you would times it by one and end up with five. Printer number two, four times it by one. 
Um, and then you just need to be careful when you actually are weighting things above one that you time, you multiply everything uh, correctly. So cost of printer is two. So you take a score of three, times it by two, and you get six. Take the four, multiply it by two, you get eight, and so on. And you basically go through and you take the score and you multiply it by that weight to get the uh, total for that criteria. And then you would go back and you would add up the total for that entire um, evaluation option. So printer number one, add it all up is 27 points. Printer number two is 35 and printer number three is 36. And you can see compared to the basic scored criteria matrix, you get different answers here. Um, so if everything, if all the criteria are equally important, printer number two comes out the winner. If you are weighting the criteria, such as in the weighted criteria matrix here, then printer number three is actually the winner with the highest score. So when you are creating a matrix, when you're evaluating criteria, if you use ratings and scoring, you need to consider, is it the best option to do a yes-no matrix, a basic scored criteria matrix, or a weighted matrix where you can say that this criteria is more important than that criteria, and so it's weighted as such. And finally, if you are interested, you can also add some pizzazz to your matrices by using uh, the themes, the table design options, so that you can add color or shading to make it a little bit easier to read. So we have an example of the weighted criteria matrix here in blue. And when you click on the table, you'll see that table design and layout pop up at the top of your uh, Microsoft Word or PowerPoint program, and you'll be able to change the design or individual shades and so on. So uh, the basic one that I typically start with is I'll be clicked on the table and I'll look at table design and I'll say what's the basic design color pattern that I want to start with and I'll pick one usually because it helps get you going and then I will make changes from there. So for example you can click on individual cells and change the shading for individual cells, right? Although there should be some logic behind it. And then you can also use for border styles, changing the color of borders, and the pen color lets you change individual borders. So let me select black here, and you can see that when you click on individual borders, you can change the color with the pen. And then the layout lets you change uh, anything as far as adding rows, deleting rows, and you can uh, you can split cells. So for example here I split uh, each printer so that they have two cells, a score and a total uh, for under each printer, or you can merge cells so that you know if this started out as two separate rows I merged printer number one. Either way it would work. And if you wanted to get rid of extra empty boxes, you can do that with the shading. So for example, go in here and say no color for this box instead of leaving it as the original color option. All right, so that's just a little bit about the world of uh, criteria matrix options and what you can do to help uh, justify and make your evaluation as objective as possible with a very quick matrix table. And it is very helpful for readers because they get a ton of information very quickly from a table. However, in most situations, you would still want to write about what's going on here. So you would still want a paragraph or so that would explain in detail what the findings are rather than just relying on a table. All right, thanks for listening.